Gentlemen, what is going on today? My name is Ryan Mickler. I'm your host and the founder of the Order of Man podcast and movement. Welcome here today and welcome back. As of the release of this podcast, which will be Friday the 8th, we're exactly one week away from the opening of our brotherhood, the Iron Council. If you're not familiar with, with what this is, it's, like I said, a brotherhood of over 1,000 men all working together to hold each other accountable, camaraderie, brotherhood, banter, friendship, but most of all, we're there to get results. And that's actually what I want to talk with you about today on this podcast. Before I get into that, just want to mention again, one week out from the opening of the Iron Council, everybody's thinking about what they want to do in 2024, and we have got some ideas, tools, and resources for you at orderofman.com slash iron council. <clears throat> Just drop your name or and your email in the uh, in the box when you go to orderofman.com slash iron council. And then I will send you an email personally uh, the night before and the day of. And we open the iron council up again, December 15th. So I hope to see you there. All right, guys, let's talk about goal setting that actually works. Everybody starts thinking about goal setting and goal planning as we're winding down the year, which is so strange to think how quickly this year has gone, and we roll into 2024, I want to talk with you today about goal setting that actually works. Because so many of us have set goals, have set dreams, ambitions, desires, vision, planning. There's an infinite number of systems and tools and resources available. I've used so many of them to varying degrees of success. I've spent a lot of money. I've spent a lot of time. I've spent a lot of energy on things that not only don't work, scientifically even, we know they don't work. There are scientific mes uh, methods and metrics that we can actually look at to determine what works when it comes to goal setting. And over the past eight to nine years, we've developed a system that will inevitably produce results. And the only reason that it wouldn't produce results for you is you don't do it. That's it. If you don't do what I'm going to share with you today, then you just won't produce results. And that's been true in my life. I'm not even saying that arrogantly. That, that has been true in my life. When I don't produce the desired result, it's because I'm not following the system that I've helped create and develop and use and utilize with, of course, thousands of years of data and research. That's it. It's, it's really that simple. So uh, let's just jump right into it. There's five components of goal setting that actually works. Number one, doesn't even have anything, well, it does a little bit. It doesn't have much to do with, with goals specifically. But the first thing you need to do is you need to have a vision for where you're going. It's a bit like a map. If I want to get from here to that mountain outside of my window and I don't know how to get there, I'm going to need some sort of map, some sort of navigation, even just my eyesight to see. I got to go that way. But I have to have something to aim at because if I don't, all the goal setting, all the goal planning, all the other stuff in the, in the world that's available is, is meaningless. It's insignificant if I don't know exactly where I'm going. And it's not wishy-washy. It's not like, I kind of want to make it over there. It's very, very specific. And when it comes to a vision, it needs to be emotionally charged. So a vision might be the kind of man that you envision yourself being in one year by the end of 2024 or in five years, 10 years, 30 years. What kind of man are you? And you need to document this. You need to write this down and you need to revisit it often. Are you a man who, well, let me say it this way. Here's some questions to consider. How do you show up when things get hard? How does your wife look at you? How do your children look at you? How do your employees look at you? If you were to die today, what would be your legacy? What would they say at your eulogy? How many people would show up? What would be the attitude and demeanor of those who did show up? Would they feel obligated to be there because they have to? Or would they want to be there because the type of impact that you had in their life? And if that's the case, what type of impact exactly did you have? What are the values that drive and motivate you? What are the characteristics and behaviors and patterns and beliefs and activities and actions in life do you portray? If your kids, I'm giving you prompts here, but if your kids were to describe you, 
would you be proud of that kind of answer? The more emotionally charged you can be when it comes to your vision, and this doesn't need to be long, by the way, but it should cover four key areas, your physical health, your mental health, your emotional health, and your spiritual health. Physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And it should cover all four of those. It could be a sentence. It could be four sentences for each of those areas. It could be a paragraph or a page. I wouldn't go longer than a page because at that point, it just becomes convoluted and watered down. And if it's two or three or five pages or a journal or a book, how often are you going to look at that thing? Probably not very often. And it's not very specific. What you'll find is as you write your vision down, there's some commonalities and some themes among the way that you show up physically, for example, versus mentally and emotionally. And if there's some common themes, then that doesn't need to be expanded into four different areas. It could be one common value or virtue that you'd like to espouse that is important to you. Write down your vision. And this isn't necessarily hyper-specific. We'll get to that. It does need to be hyper-specific. But you do need to think about the type of man that you want to be. I watch a lot of movies. I read a lot of books. Obviously, I talk to a lot of inspiring men. They all have characteristics that I'm inspired by, that I'm motivated by, whether they're fictional in a book or a movie, for example, or whether they're, they're actual human beings. I'm, I'm inspired by these guys. And so I take what I'm inspired by and I infuse that into my vision so that I can be the kind of man that I want to be. And, and I think one thing that I don't talk often about, that I don't actually think is often talked about, is art as a form of, of motivation and inspiration. And I'm talking about music. I'm talking about painting or photography. I'm talking about movies and television. There, there, there's opportunity for you to infuse art into your vision. We don't talk about it a lot, but I just watched Maverick, for example, uh, last night. And that's art. I mean, those, those are actors. They're portraying a part. They, they aren't really those people, right? But they're portraying those parts and, and the characteristics espoused by those characters are characteristics that I want to have in my life. And so I'm inspired by art. I have art all around my office. I've got artwork here. I've got a moose over there. I've got pictures that I have yet to have hung up. I've got a, an, an incredible uh, print of the Archangel Michael, uh, like this is art. It's, it inspires me. This is art. This, <laughs> this is art. Protect, provide, preside. This is art, our merchandise. Like there's, there's art. There's things all around us that are going to motivate you. You might be driving down the road and see a billboard and it motivates you. You might watch a movie and it motivates you. You might listen to a song and it motivates you. Whatever you can do to infuse something that inspires and motivates you. All right, I think I beat a dead horse on that one. Vision is number one. Once we have a vision, now we can reverse engineer the process into actual goal setting. And again, we're only going to we're going to talk about four key areas. We're going to talk about physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And when it comes to goal setting, there's a couple of different components. Number one, we can't have it be too long. So I don't, I personally don't like. And again, this this is it, it, science suggests that this is the case that if your goal is expanded over too broad of a or too long of a timeline, it, it, you're gonna you're not gonna complete it. It's it's just too long, and so you can't keep your heart and mind and soul into it. But also, if it's too short, then you don't have the time required to accomplish something worthwhile. If I want, if, if I, I want to say, for example, if, if I want to lose uh, one pound this week, I mean, look, I, I could lose a pound, but is that significant? Is that meaningful? Is that really driving actionable change in my life? Probably not. It's too short of a timeline. The perfect timeline that I found is 12 weeks. And that's why we have our 12 week battle planner. It's enough time to accomplish meaningful change in your life, but it's short enough that it will keep you engaged and motivated towards the goal that you're going to accomplish and the next step, the task that you're going to need to do on a daily basis in order to achieve those results. So what I would like you to do, whether you use our tools and resources like this battle planner or our battle ready program, which is a free program at orderaman.com slash battle ready, or you join the iron council, which is the 
the the creme de la creme, if you will, of of planning and goal setting and actually achieving those things. Whatever you use is fine, but I want you to have it in those four key areas. Physical, what do you want to do physically? So for example, in the first quarter of 2024, I want to be at 13% body fat. Okay, we, we can measure that. We can track that. We can figure out what we need to do in, in order to accomplish that because millions of other people have done it. So how have they done it? Good, we're going to model those, those actions to achieve those results. Or you might say, I want to pay off $20,000 of debt by the first quarter of 2024. Okay, let's reverse engineer that. What do we need to do? Well, we need to put down, you know, pay off. If, if we break it down on a monthly basis, what would that be about? Roughly just under $7,000 a month, $6,666 or whatever it comes to, right? That, that's what we needed to pay down per month, which equates to a little over $200 a day. Hey, how do we do that? How do we make sense of that? We, we can look at the numbers. It's, it's not hard. When it comes to something a little bit more challenging to, to quantify for your spirituality, for example, there might be a, a, a course that you want to take on, uh, online, or maybe you decide that you want to read the Bible in the first quarter of 2024. Okay, well, let's look at how many pages are in the Bible, or how many chapters, or how many verses based on how you want to measure it. And we'll reverse engineer it. And here's what you need to read every single day. There's no guesswork in that, by the way. Like, just jump online and say, read the Bible in 90 days. And I'm sure there's a program out there that says you have to read, you know, three pages or whatever it comes to. It's it, this, this doesn't need to be complex. And anybody who tells you it's complicated, it's hard, or you look at their system and it's, it's, it, it's a nightmare and you have to like track every little thing and all that. They're lying to you. And we're lying to ourselves often. Because what I do see happening quite often is people will make things deliberately more challenging than they need to. So they have an excuse. Well, it was hard. So I couldn't do it. Well, now you don't have an excuse. It's not hard. It's actually very simple. You just need to execute it. And if you're trying to make it more complicated than it needs to be, then... You might be doing that even subconsciously in order to absolve yourself of the actions and the results that you will produce through the actions that you are finding it so difficult to complicate or, or uh, administer in your life. So number one, vision, right? Number two is now we're going to have our object objectives in those four key areas. Now, number three, again, we're reverse engineering the process. So now we're going to move into tactics. These are things that you're going to do on a daily basis. So the example I used, one of the examples was read the Bible in the first quarter of 2024. Perfect. What do we need to do on a daily basis? Well, we need to read five pages from the Bible. That's it. So we take this vision that we have, which is very emotionally charged and driven. We reverse engineer it into the objectives, read the Bible in the first quarter of 2024. And now it's very black and white. All I have to do right now is read five pages. I don't need to worry about anything else. This is the beauty of goal setting that actually works. I don't need to worry about anything else. All I need to worry about is hitting five pages every single day. Now, I think intent matters. So if we're just scrambling through it before midnight because we forgot to do it and we got busy and everything else, I don't think that's going to be as meaningful as waking up deliberately and intentionally 15 minutes earlier so you can read five pages of the Bible. The way we do things matters, but the objective is all the same. All I have to do is read five pages. If I want to pay off that $20,000 of debt, you guys correct me on the math. I might be wrong, but all I have to do is pay off just over $200 a day. So for some of you, you might think that's daunting. I, I don't care what the goal is. For some of you, you might think that's not daunting enough. It doesn't matter to me what your goal is. If it's paying off $2,000 in a quarter, great. If it's $20,000, great. If it's $200,000, even better. I don't know what it is for you. All I'm saying is that it should be something that you can quantify, that you can measure, and that you can actually work towards. So if it's $200 a day, great. All you have to do is check a box. Did I pay off debt? Did I, did I send a check to my creditors for $200 today? Yes or no? 
It's like being pregnant. It's not maybe, it's not kind of, it's not sort of. You either are pregnant or you're not pregnant. It's one or the other, male and female. You're either a male or a female. It's binary. You're not one or the other. You're a man or a woman. That's it. Same thing with the tactics. You either did it or you didn't do it. And I don't care about your excuses. I don't care about your justifications. I don't care about your rationalizations. And I don't care because I'm not attached to your results, but you are. And so you can bullshit yourself and you can tell yourself, well, you know, I couldn't go to the gym this morning because, you know, I had an early morning meeting. Well, why didn't you wake up an hour earlier? Oh, well, uh, you don't know what time I went to bed. I don't care what time you went to bed. Did you say you were going to do it or not? Well, I said I was going to do it and you didn't do it. So you failed today. Doesn't make you a failure, by the way. It just means you failed today in that thing. Maybe it's not midnight yet, which means you can go to the gym after work. Well, Ryan, I can't because, uh, you know, I got this thing or whatever. <laughs> Keep making excuses. I, I, again, I'm not attached to your results. You are. And I, I know this from experience, not only personal experience, but also experience in talking with you guys. You're not satisfied with life. I'm not happy in my relationship because fill in the blank. I'm not happy with my work because fill in the blank. I'm not happy with my financial situation because fill in the blank. I'm not happy with my relationship with God because fill in the blank. I hear these messages every single day. And I've said these things. Okay, let's do something about it. Well, Ryan, I can't because I'm busy. Well, welcome to the club. Ryan, I can't because I have other obligations. Welcome. We all have obligations. Change some things around. Make things a priority. Make things important to you. I went to bed late last night. I woke up this morning. At, uh, my alarm was set for 5.50. I'm like, oh, this sucks. I don't want to go to the gym. But you know what I did? I went to the gym because that's what I said I would do. And I'm not 100% on that, by the way. I wish I could tell you I was. That's, that would be a lie. I'm not. But I went this morning. And I could have rationalized it, justified it. I went to bed, like sleep's more important. You, you can even make a valid case that that's accurate. But that's not my objective to get eight hours of sleep. My objective is to go to the gym. Excuse me. My tactic is to go to the gym every single day, not to get seven to eight hours of sleep. That might be another tactic down the road, but that's not what it is right now, this 90 days. This 90 days is to train at least one hour of deliberate training physical training per day. So yeah, I didn't get the sleep I needed. So what? I'll get it later. All right, next. So again, let me recap here. We've got vision. Uh, we've got our objectives. We've got our tactics. And then the next thing I would suggest to you is you need checkpoints along the way. So you need to know what you're doing actually works. So if you are trying to pay off debt, $20,000 of debt in, in, uh, 30 days, you should be roughly $7,000 less in debt. And if you're not, then you're not doing it right. You, you've got to have objectifiable metrics to measure this because you're going to, again, you're going to try to fool yourself. You're going to try to deceive yourself. I promise you will. We all do it. I do it. You're going to tell yourself you're better than you really are, that you're doing better, that you're doing more. And you're not unless you actually look at the data. I know this to be true with regards to dieting eating correctly. I'll go in and I'll put my food in and realize I thought I was eating good. And when I go in and put my food in, I realized pretty quickly that no, I wasn't doing as good as I thought. So having these, these very clear defined checkpoints along the way to let you know how you're doing is crucial. It's that simple guys. And there's a few resources that you can use. You can go to store.orderman.com to pick up our battle planner. And there's a video that goes along with that. You can join the Iron Council, which opens up on Friday of next week, the 15th at orderaman.com slash Iron Council. You can join a free program called Battle Ready, which is orderaman.com slash Battle Ready, or you could do it on your own. I care. I was going to say I don't. I do care how you do it. Um, I, I, I want you to be able to produce the results that you want in your life. But guys, it's that simple. Number one, vision. Number two, objectives in those areas, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual. Number three, tactics that you complete on a daily basis that you can literally check off on a piece of paper or a battle planner like this. And then the last component of it is having checkpoints along the way. 
30 day and 60 day to make sure you're on the path. And if you're not, then you can change. Maybe you need to change your vision. I wouldn't necessarily suggest that first. Maybe your objective is off. Maybe your tactics are off. That's usually what it is. If you're not achieving your objectives, then your tactic, what you're doing on a daily basis is not working. You need to qualified people to help you understand what that is. And then you need to execute. So vision, objectives, uh, tactics, and then checkpoints along the way. I said five. The last thing is an after action review. We'll cover that later. But that's the fifth component is an after action review. Just going in and saying, okay, did this work? Did I achieve my goals? Did I achieve my objectives? What did I do well? What didn't I do so well? What can I do better in this next quarter? So vision, objectives, tactics, checkpoints, after action review. I hope that serves you guys. There are resources available free, orderman.com slash battle ready, a program that you can use on your own. You can get either an app or the battle planner at a store.orderman.com. And you can do that on your own. There's an accompanying video that will help you go through that battle planner. Uh, or again, the creme de la creme, the, the Cadillac version, if you will, of what we're talking about here is the Iron Council, where you get an added level of accountability, camaraderie, but brotherhood, and uh, achievement. And that's at orderman.com slash Iron Council. I hope that serves you guys. Let me know if there's other things that you're doing in your life that have helped you achieve your greatest objectives. And we'll keep getting after it. I want 2024 to be a big year for me in all of the areas, spiritual, mental, physical, and emotional areas that I talked about. And I want it to be a big year for you as well. And this is the way that we do it. This is the way that you do it. There's no question about it. The debate has been settled. Now it's just a matter of how exactly you implement it. And if you have questions or concerns or whatever it may be, hit me up on Instagram at Ryan Mickler, email ryan at orderman.com. I will personally respond to both of those, the Instagram or the email. I'll personally respond to you and we'll get you lined out. All right, guys, we'll be back next week. Until then, go out there, take action and become the man you are meant to be.